One of the things I dislike about the modern game are the international breaks which are foisted on us several times a season. They usually arrive at the most inopportune times and leave supporters twiddling their thumbs for a couple of weeks. With regards to this latest one, though, I'm glad it's arrived because I honestly need a little break from Stoke City right now. Seven games unbeaten should have us on the edge of our seats, feeling positive about the team and looking forward to the remainder of the season. Sadly, a closer examination of that run shows it is not all it's cracked up to be. There are six drawers in there, four of them 0-0 affairs, including our last three matches, and it's part of an overall run of just three wins in our last 17 games. Coupled with a slim serving of entertainment during that run, the 7-game 1 or the 17-game 1, take your pick, it's pretty lean fair. It doesn't feel a lot different to the 10-game unbeaten run Derry Rowett side put together not long before the club ran out of patience and sacked him. There's a form table you can find on the internet which shows that since Christmas Day, 15 league games ago, Stoke are actually fourth bottom of the championship table. Only Bolton, QPR and Ipswich are below us. That's not the most telling statistic from this run, though. The one which chills the most reveals that during those 15 games, we have scored just 7 goals. That is less than 1 in every 2 matches. If you want an amusing statistic with a pottery's angle, the only team in the Football League who have scored fewer goals than Fort Vale, with just 8 to their name, in 2019 are Stoke with 7. That tally leaves us well adrift at the foot of the goals scored column in the form table. The next two nearest teams are relegation bound Ipswich and Bolton, with 11 to their name, while nobody after that has less than 15. The runaway top scorers are leaders Norwich City, who have a staggering 36 goals in their last 15 games. That's only one less than the 37 we've scored in our 38 championship games so far this season. OK, so what's the point of all of this? Am I just trying to make Stoke supporters feel worse than they already do? Well no. In fact, I'm trying to put together an idea of what we're doing right now and what we might be building towards. Our current form is far from exhilarating, and despite an unbeaten run of 7 games we are still stuck in 16th place with just 10 league wins to our name all season. We are a long way from being an outfit capable of challenging for promotion, and we have an awful lot of ground to make up in time for next season. Championship form table during this run of 15 games, we have taken only 13 points. Even if you look at the unbeaten run of 7 games, they have yielded only 9 points. Extrapolate that over the course of a season and it only yields 59 points, a long way short of what we are realistically going to need to be genuinely competitive in 2019-20. Looking at things logically, it's hard to see where we're going to be adding to the midfield and forward areas of the team next season. Right now we have Allen, Edibo, Klukas, Woods and Adam to choose from in the middle. McLean, Ince and Verlinden are battling for the wide berths, while Vokes, Abobi and probably Campbell will be competing for what may be just one forward spot if Nathan Jones decides to go with his preferred, diamond, formation. Given how much money has been spent acquiring many of these players, you'd imagine the club will expect to get some value out of them. They'll certainly not be wanting to spend even more cash trying to replace them. And that assumes we could offload them in the first place. Unwanted 13.5 million pounds recruit poised to join ranks of Stoke City's invisible men at the moment, it seems as though our manager is working on shoring up his defense, and there's no question we are starting to see the positive results. Danny Bath has been instrumental in triggering a newfound solidity at the heart of our defense and seems to have helped bring back the very best in skipper Ryan Shawcross. In those last 15 games I've mentioned from the form table we've conceded only 15 goals, and in the last 7 unbeaten we've left in only 2, with 4 scored ourselves. This is to be welcomed and acknowledged of course. 
if Nathan Jones is taking a long-term view towards being effective next season then he obviously needs to get us mean and uncompromising at one end first. Stoke City boss reveals where his most potent athletes must play when you don't concede goals you put yourself in a position to win games with just one goal, and in that respect we may not be too far away from what aiming for. Eventually, though, you have to start scoring goals, and you have to be able to score enough to compensate for those occasions when you do slip up at the back. At the moment, based solely on what we're seeing on the pitch, we have a long way to go, and it's going to take a heck of an effort to get where we want to be. This is why Stoke City fans have opted to suffer in silence we are, after all, a team which has now gone a mind-boggling 62 games since we last managed to score three goals in a competitive game. Fortunately, the vast majority of fans are sticking with the team and Nathan Jones. They have pretty much written off this season, to the point where most are stoically accepting the lack of excitement and entertainment on the pitch. The price for the manager, though, will be an increased expectation at the start of next season. And the price for the club may yet be seen in the uptake of season tickets, or the lack of it. Some supporters may not be encouraged enough by the prospect of what we are building by the time it comes for them to commit to next season. For all your latest Stoke City news, opinion, analysis and transfer gossip, click here.